What is up, guys? We doubles back again with a brand new video, and today we have episode five of the Turtle Wow V Plus Custom Vanilla Journey. Yes, my friends, I am excited to get back on here. It's been a few days. The goal is level 50, and I think we can get there on our Goblin Warlock. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get into it. So with this episode, guys, we are finally going to be going for a goal of level 50 and accessing Gila Jim's Isle for the very first time, which is a custom subzone of Stranglethorn Vale. But hold on, guys. Before we go any further, let me tell you guys about the sponsor for this video and for this month, Raid Shadow Legends. Just to remind you guys, I only do a sponsorship once a month, typically, and Raid has been helping me a lot in that regard. I tell you a little bit about them, and we get better quality content on the channel, which is always a pretty big plus. Now, this time, guys, I want to talk to you guys about a really awesome faction, the High Elves, which is really, really really amazing to play. The High Elves in Raid Shadow Legends are pretty interesting. They're the politically savvy, empire-creating types, all about magic, all about being pompous and better than everybody else. And they have their analog as well with the Dark Elves of that game. It's something that I definitely enjoy playing, and it's something that I cannot wait to play in Raid as well. Now, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is a non-stop schedule of special events that Raid has this month, including the Forge Pass Season 3 with some amazing awards on offer, including a limited edition artifact set, and Raid has some new champions coming out with some new champion skins, for the incredible Madam Ceres. But wait, guys, here's the big news about an awesome new addition to everybody's favorite champion. He's finally getting the upgrade he deserves. You might have seen his struggle for awesomeness in some of Raid's videos, but finally, the Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion. It's something a lot of people have been waiting for, guys, and I honestly cannot wait to see how the Death Knight turns out. So if any of that sounds cool to you guys, you want something casual like that to pick up and play on your phone, it's never been a better time to get started. New players can use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth at least 30 bucks and a free champion, Ina, and also this cool in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. And once you're in, you can find me in-game under the name McDoubles underscore YT. And if you're fast, you can join my clan. And it's that easy, guys. If anything I said sounds interesting to you, click the link in the description below, scan that QR our code and I'll see you in game. If you don't know, we've been doing a series on Turtle WoW, which is a Vanilla Plus server that focuses on taking Vanilla WoW and giving it custom changes that actually are in line with Warcraft 3 and cut content from the original Vanilla WoW, as well as quality of life changes as well. In the first episode, we made our Goblin Warlock Boom Boy and checked out the starter zone and some of the features of the game. Episodes 2, 3, and 4 had us getting through levels 20, 30, and all the way up to level 40. And by the way, we're doing this series with the main goal in mind of doing all of the custom and cut content that Turtle WoW has to offer and showing it and actually experiencing it firsthand. And in this video, we're going to be progressing all the way to level 50. So, let's begin. Okay, so one of the premises of this video, I just realized from the last video, is that we're going to be trying Destruction and uh, going to build a world PvP spec with it because we might actually encounter people out there. I don't want to die, and things are going to be tougher, I know, by leveling with this spec, so okay, a bit of a handicap in this video, but also maybe not. Maybe it'll be really good, but okay. Anyway, enough talk. What is this going to entail? Well, I'm going to end up picking up Conflagrate for instant fire damage off the Immolate, so as a result of that, I'm going to go hard and emulate and I think searing pain as well that's a really weird way to play and it's kind of super duper dangerous so what I ended up doing is taking five points in cataclysm and then five points in bane to reduce the cast time of everything as well I took the shadow burn which ends up being a lot of damage and five percent crit from devastation I then personally went for five points and improved searing pain one thing you'll notice in this video is that that was probably my biggest mistake and more on that later on but 10% more crit we take the ruin 100% more critical strike damage paramount for the build and improved immolate mostly so that we can grab the con flag at the very end of it but first i'm going to go two points in intensity 70 percent chance to resist getting interrupted while i'm casting a spell that could be good wish it was 100 percent though obviously and then pyroclasm for a 26 percent chance to stun on rain of fire hellfire soul fire man uh and by the way that's for three seconds so all of those spells are kind of niche but we're going to try to make them work and then lastly of course as i said the con flag as well but that's going to be the main premise of the video and anything else that comes from this is just going to be purely me testing it but i think we're going to go all the way into fire five points in ember storm two points in destructive reach and yeah we'll see where we go from there so the first thing we did today was try to get to level 42 by completing a razor fen downs run this is a dead pig run basically and i did as many quests as i possibly could sadly because of how quickly we got through our 30s with dungeons like crescent grove i actually skipped 
a lot of Scarlet Monastery. And of course, we skipped Razorfen Crawl, which is more stuff as well that ends up coming into this dungeon. So we also played with two rogues, awesome people, but I actually mained a rogue in TBC. It's very, very similar to vanilla wall leveling as far as I'm concerned. And I know the struggle with the DPS, so uh, yeah, I felt it. But we had a really, really good healer and a really, really good tank, and the run went pretty good, even though it was pretty slow. But that's okay, because that's the point of these types of videos. To condense many, many hours into one short palatable video, right? But again, level 42 was accomplished. And if I'm honest with you, it was pretty chill and a whole lot of fun. Okay, guys, so two wipes and about an hour later, and we are about to approach the very last boss of RFD. First and hopefully the last time that I actually do this dungeon on vanilla. Turtle WoW. I am playing the Conflag spec, which is kind of weird as well, because typically you just do double dot corruption agony or something like that and then go for the wand. I'm going for immolate on everything, a little bit more mana intensive, but I feel a lot stronger when it comes to the AO AOE. The problem with AOE right now with these low levels is that you can obviously, as you see my dots alone, you pull threat pretty easily off the tank and it's not really their fault. But with this guy killed, Amninar the Coldbringer, I'm going to have this quest complete, bring the end, and that's going to be huge, guys. No loot this run. I don't think Amninar actually gives you anything as well. And there was even a wand that dropped. I'll put it on the screen right now. Dude, for some reason, this wand is mage only. It's called Plague Rot. What does that even mean? Like, why would you do that to somebody? Even Shadow Priest, right? Like, that's just a big F. All right, I'm just going to spam Shadow Bolt because this guy's actually dying super fast. I actually thought this would be a lot harder. Let's just go Conflag. I can't even aim has gone Shadowburn. All right, he's dead. Holy crap. Really? That's the boss fight? That's harder on Ascension. I really thought the boss fight would be more because every fight up to this was so difficult and slow. But I guess that's like old school WoW for you. Like the trash packs are harder than the bosses. It looks like I'm going to get a seven stamina necklace as well with 10 spirit, which is uh, basically the same thing I've got, but better. So that's not too bad. I've also got quite a few things to start prepping my fire damage. I just need a good main hand weapon. That would be really nice. And then I have 26 fire damage saved up right here with this belt and this offhand. I'm not gonna lie, like the conflag spec is super awkward because Searing Pain takes the threat away from your demon when you're questing, so it doesn't even feel right to use it. You still seemingly want to just, you know, double dot wand, maybe go Voidwalker or Succubus if you expect something to happen. That's just what I've noticed so far, but let's go to Undercity and turn this quest in. Okay, I went to Undercity, I turned the quest in, we've got the brand new Amber Glow Talisman. It's nothing crazy special, but I'll definitely take any upgrade we could possibly get. And we've got quite a few things to do in this video. First of all, Zulfarak, that's a thing we could do in Teneris in general. That's going to be fun. Already got quests to go there. Already got the flight point as well, which is nice. So thinking ahead. Went for the Void Walker, by the way, because fact of the matter is, oh, is that an actual player I can fight? Maybe, maybe not. But the Void Walker tanks these guys pretty well. So I can just go for the Immolate, go for the Curse, and still go for the Wand. But one thing I can do now that I have the Con Flag is when they get low enough, I can finish off the Immolate with the Con Flag or just when the Immolate's about to wear off, like right now. Boom, 584 crit. That's sick. Let's go for the Drain Soul, actually. I could use the soul shards. I'm killing Naga explorers right now. I've got to get one thing of holy spring water over here as well. Anytime people like this show up, I just invite them and we just do this stuff together. But that's a hardcore, so I can't fight with that guy. You have to think about it, guys. If you play hardcore, you do get that happy feeling of knowing that you're doing something very few people try to do. 349 crit, by the way, with Immolate. All right, uh, let's just go for the shadow burn here. Oh, that's a guy. See, hopefully the level 49 doesn't attack me. So one thing I've noticed is that the community is really good on this server so far. I mean, if you take world chat antics, out of it because that's always going to be very degen people have been very kind for example that 49 didn't kill me let's be real most of the time the 49 would kill you so anyway i'm going to keep doing my quest the goal is obviously 43 and 50 by the end and uh, yeah we'll see what we get into yo wait what Death Coil's actually in the game? Dude, I forgot about that. Of course it is. This happened to me earlier. I saw a Shadow Priest with Silence, and I was like, really? Silence was in the game in vanilla? Death Coil? Guys, wow! This is gonna be so good for PvP, it's not even funny. I mean, that goes without saying, but, uh... Causes the enemy target to run in horror for three seconds. It does a good amount of shadow damage too. That's a shadow burns worth of damage at this level. And I get 100% of the damage caused back to me as health. That's amazing. Only for 87 silver. I'll take it. I'm not going to get these other three spells. I'm approaching that time and I've really already been there. I just got really, really stubborn about it. Where, you know, buying every spell is not really worth it right now. Some of these just kind of suck. I'd rather just not spend it. So, okay, we're good right now. I'm going to buy some demon abilities as well. For example, I definitely want Voidwalker Torment rank 4 
because he's not able to keep guys off me with what he currently has. Okay, we'll go with that. That's pretty good. I'm really excited about the death coil though. I did not plan around it or even the Howl of Terror, it seems, for my binds. You can see, like, I don't even know what to do at this point about my binds. I think we'll just put death coil on something really easy to click. And here we go. We can teach suffering to our guy. We could teach consume shadows to our guy. Torment and sacrifice, like I said. Yeah, we're pretty much good to go. Well, I think we're going to do some of these northern STV quests, but also I just want to find different places to go. I feel like level 40, there are quite a few places. I could go to Badlands, for example, I'm pretty sure. We might actually do that. Yeah, let's do Badlands as well. So currently, guys, I'm at 192 Alchemy and 215 Herbalism. This one is going up so nice and steadily. I'm actually going to go to the bank, though, and get some of my herbs and see if we can make some pots. Probably mana pots, you can see I can already do it, but I also picked up a Mighty Troll Blood Potion recipe, and I actually believe I got this in Razor Fen Downs. I could probably show it to you guys, I could fish up the clips somewhere, but there's a dude you can talk to, and when you do, he teaches you an alchemy recipe. Obviously, I've never done this, because I never take alchemy, that's why I told you guys, I believe in episode 1, uh, that I literally have never tried vanilla alchemy or herbalism. I have always gone for mining and engineering, and even skinning and leatherworking, an actual classic when I played my shaman. So this is exciting for me. Now, as I say, that is the mighty troll blood potion good 12 health every five seconds is kind of like my demon armor on steroids actually it's the same thing as a rank three demon armor take out the armor and the shadow resistance you know i actually have a crap ton of bruise weed holy crap dude like literally 99 do i have any life root oh i do so i can make a lot of those pots maybe it's good to have that kind of health regen while i'm out and about or i can make greater healing potions i've actually run out of all my healing pots at this point so that might actually be what i do i've got a lot of king's blood in my bank as well we can combine that with the life root and it's still yellow the way i've always liked to approach this stuff is i try to save the orange for when the yellow can no longer Longer get me a level it's really greedy sometimes because you don't always get a level with the yellow ones but most of the time you do so let's see where we get trying to craft 21 greater healing pots we're already at 194 let's see where we leave off at the very bare minimum this is a really nice thing to have a bunch of if this goes green though we're gonna stop okay it just went green at 205 alchemy guys i'll take that for now I'll also go ahead and make three of these uh mighty troll blood potions as well we'll just craft them and see if they work they last an hour that's three hours worth of 12 health every five seconds if i don't die i don't think it persists on death maybe i'm wrong i'd like to be wrong but i think it's not like that in vanilla so we're gonna be ending though at 208 alchemy and once again 215 herbalism and now we're going to go back out and quest except this time we have 18 greater healing pots and we are prepared i also got a bunch of silk cloth guys like i need to go back for my first aid all right guys i'm going to do some tent party shenanigans basically afking here till i'm at 150 percent rested xp and then we'll go back to questing like i said look now they're building a tower out of tents in the crossroads and people made it to the top so guys, I just got done with Oldemon, and this was probably like a good hour and a half, taking a guess, but it seems like about an hour and a half. What I can say is that I've learned a lot actually from playing Warlock and Vanilla because of dungeons like that. The entire time I do these dungeons as a Warlock, I feel useful. Whether it's soul stones that save the group, health stones, even with me being an alchemist, giving potions to people, all of this seems to be a really big deal. But not only that, breaking out the Hellfire, for example, and killing lots of mobs in a way that none of the other classes could do. Using Howl of Terror, on the last boss and by the way great call on Amorius there because that's what allowed us to kill it we wiped like two or three times once again something literally none of the other classes in my dungeon could have done that's what I mean I think there's something to be said about doing things that literally nobody else could do except for somebody that's playing the exact same class as you and that's not going to be a super common thing especially with a class like Locke maybe if you're shaman or pally or something or warrior you're going to see it a lot more often but with some of the lesser played classes it feels even better and for example, we're gonna summon Bunyan, and once again, who can summon? Just me! Of course, I gotta get a soul shard real quick, but that's huge, dude. I'm gonna do the Garrett family treasure quest. I'm gonna give these guys 2G if they help me with it. One of those things where sometimes you have to bribe people, you know, just so you can get that extra quest XP. I don't have to pay for a mount because I'm a warlock, so it's not that deep to me. But yeah, that's just like the main revelation I'm getting from all of this, is that I actually, more so than I felt on my shaman when I did that in Classic WoW, I feel useful. I don't feel like I'm doing some niche thing on the side that's not not actually that good and trying to make it work does that make sense i hope it makes sense because it's actually so much more fun uh than i ever thought it would be as i go in the super super slow loading screen okay let's see if we can summon this guy in a moment okay
Okay, summoning a player. Once again, Warlock exclusive. All right, guys, we did it too. Thanks to Amorius and Bunyan for coming back here and helping me get the Garrett family chest. Money well spent. 1G per like 1,200 XP. That's awesome. Okay, here it is. Boom. Let's get it. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of quests done. This should be at least very close to level 40. Five. Okay, let's go ahead and just do this, right? Two. There we go. Spent the money. Got it all done. GG. I'm so happy with this, guys. Ultimon was a cool experience. I was thinking about it too. You know, 40 and 50 is pretty good in vanilla. You have Ultimon quest. You have Zulfarok quest. At the end, we're going to have Hate Forge quarry and whatever that means. And uh, yeah, there's like 15 different zones you can level in as well. I was thinking about it. You know, I was actually down here in Swamp of Sorrows earlier. I did quite a few quests here. A lot of them kind of were not the best, but I was able to do like maybe six or seven. And then I went up here to the Badlands, did quite a few quests there as well. Finished some up in Stranglethorn Vale and haven't even been to Tenaris yet, which I guess will go very, very soon. And I think there's even more stuff. Like, I could go to Hinterlands if I wanted to as well, and there's apparently a lot of quests to do here. We have lots of stuff to do. So another thing I want to show you guys is this thing linked by the Pally Tank we had, Amorius. I'm also going to get this Atlas loot add-on he's talking about. There's apparently a unique one for Turtle Wild that shows you all the custom stuff, and that's going to be pretty cool. But I'm putting this on the screen right now. This is a brand new helmet that comes apparently from Strat Live. Now, not only is it really badass stat-wise, 13 strength, 14 stam, 10 intellect, 1 percent crit and a five percent chance so okay more unique effects dude i love this five percent chance of 15 to 25 fire damage on a melee attack but look to the left and check out how badass that looks it even makes my goblin look good imagine what it looks like on a high elf or a human like oh man i bet that's gorgeous dude stuff like that is really amazing and based on what this guy is saying he literally said when i saw that in their custom atlas loot add-on it's what made me play yeah dude that's amazing it would make me want to play pally too right now though guys i want to go ahead and do this one quest I couldn't get done, which was the Blood Sail Buccaneers. Apparently, according to my pal Cold Logic up here, he told me that after completing this, I could talk to a gnome in Booty Bay, very conspicuous, very interesting, and that it'll lead me over here to this little island, which is apparently full of custom quests. Now, the point of this series is to show you guys custom quests, because, I mean, that's the point, right? So, I don't want to make it to where Hate Forge Quarry is the only custom thing in the video, so let's see if we can make this happen. Oh, is there a pally in there? Maybe we can group with this guy. I also got level 40 four obviously and almost 45 from oldamon look at those crits dude and i got a brand new shadow bolt spell rank seven so big big damage probably would have helped a lot to have that in the oldamon but uh it is vanilla wow you get your new rank ups when you can uh the high elf is not speaking to me i don't expect all the people from the other faction to be willing to group with me i don't have my demon out i'm actually killing stuff so i can drain soul so i don't want to forget i gotta get this uh void walker going but yeah like i said we'll see if we can get this quest done oh my god not die to these guys that would be wonderful oh man they might kill me please god no I require assistance. Please. The blood sail buccaneers. I must do it. Sadly, I'm just a lowly goblin. And this place is really difficult alone. Captain just died? That's a big F. I must say. I am surrounded by Alliance, who honestly would love to kill me, and I know it. I just realized I have no food. Not having food is really bad. Mr. Mage. Mr. Mage. If you would please give me some food. I will tip you. I will tip you. Drinks too. <laughs> oh man, good guy. Okay, it might be level 25 food, but it's level 35 water, so that's actually the most important part if I'm honest with you. Okay, sick. We found a friend to do this quest with. Okay, so like I said in previous videos, this is honestly the best part. When you find some pals to do some stuff with, no strings attached. Uh, I love that. There's a con flag, by the way. 328. That's so good, dude. I'm so worried because I did actually, I don't have clips, honest to God, but I did get bodied by a warrior at one point point on the beaches of stv when i say bodied i mean there was no fight uh this was probably when i was like 38 they rolled up on me basically four shot me and then i was gone and i thought oh <laughs> apparently warriors can kill you that quick at this level i am a squishy after all so i just wanted to let you guys know like things are pretty tumultuous out there for me as a lowly warlock right now i am pretty op with the death coil and i have not had a single fight with howl of terror or death coil on my bars so that could change everything but as you can see i am still pretty much addicted to the void walker i think he's just overall too good the succubus is pretty good but like i said after getting destroyed by that warrior where the sacrifice actually would have come in handy and i was using the succubus i thought i don't know man like maybe this is not it and then i always use the imp so far for dungeons as i've said before for the stamina buff and stuff like that okay so my pal almost got one shot by the pirate while i was typing to him and neither of us expected that damage but luckily oh my burst bro Imagine if I crit with a Shadow Bolt Con Flag and a Shadow Burn. I would one-shot a player too. The problem is I'm too reliant on the crit itself, you know? Okay, so he sheeped that guy in the back. I think we're just gonna piece. I'm actually gonna go ahead 
and give this guy a health stone because he's still my partner i don't want him to die i don't want to be selfish right now i will go ahead and just kill this guy as well no problem bro i meant to actually put the np first so it looked worse than it really is anyway let's go ahead and kill this one too i think i would have beat this guy though i don't know he could be really good at the game he could also probably poly me and then as he runs away and my void walker chases him it wouldn't matter right but i've heard from some people that warlock always beats mage and that makes sense especially if you have fell hunter because apparently fell hunter does have the interrupt which in and of itself just must suck when you're also spamming death coil and fear okay guys quest complete and this my friends is level 45 five more levels to go it's already been quite a bit now let's see if we can make it to this island and do the custom content okay there is in fact a gnome called garfield spark blast the fox and he has a quest for me called red flag over the sea but anyway this guy's a crew member of the blood cell buccaneers and apparently it has to do with their faction so let's do it okay i want to join you yes you can help me in fact oh my god blood cell buccaneers reputation went up a lot oh they put you at neutral oh so you can literally do whatever you want to make them hate you and no matter what you can come here and start this that's cool weapons laying about bring five weapon crates to a guy named narc dude his name is narc bring me their weapons gotcha wait do i literally just go around booty bay and steal weapons okay okay this is gonna be the last one they were pretty easy to find i don't feel like i've ever had to talk to this guy but he's a pirate supplies shopkeeper after you bring each crate one by one you turn your attention toward narc here's your pay gotcha wait that's it i get 500 blood cell buccaneer reputation black swashbuckler shirt by the way tailoring i don't know if this is already in the game cockatiel and senegal i guess we buy both we just start collecting pets right and that's what they look like by the way they're actually pretty cool little bird pets i'll take that oh the little gnome has another quest for me let's go see a cannon's misfortune sabotage the blast powder kegs i saw those while looking for weapons okay this is my last one they weren't too hard to find i'm gonna let you guys find them for yourself but uh i will say it's basically just on this uh left hand part of the city right in different buildings and and stuff like that let's go turn it in five minute quick adventure in and out all right cannon's misfortune turning it in what do i get by the way oh, okay it is only 1000 xp for those kind of quests loss of rum now poison the rum so i'm sabotaging booty bay at the moment by the way okay i saw this earlier too so this is nice as you're finding other things from previous quests you do come into contact if you actually look with things you'll need for the future quests okay loss of good rum another thousand xp exterminate the rat kill morgan the storm and bring his head to garfield oh okay i remember this morgan the storm guy so i'm going back out all right guys let's jump in the water and swim on over yo check this out the blood cell guys they're not hostile to me i've never ever encountered that i could attack this guy but i feel like it'd be the longest fight of my life he has over 3,000 hp he's not hostile and he's a hybrid that can heal so we're gonna keep moving down the beach and try to find that morgan guy i'm pretty confident i know where he is i'm pretty sure i've seen him before as well okay morgan the storm the iron patch kill iron patch and bring his oh wait this is a different quest that i did not do spit in morgan's face okay i'll do that to you oh we're fighting morgan okay well, i guess i can't turn that quest in so we might as well delete that one again all right there's a shadow bolt conflag i'm actually gonna end this fight with a nice nasty drain soul there we go morgan's severed head and i also spat in his face i was specifically part of this quest I did not do that i could not complete it man okay well let's go back okay giving this uh little gnome somebody's severed head i don't know where he's gonna put it what he's gonna do with it but there you go even more reputation making a statement your mate put morgan's head in this jolly roger what is it okay you ain't about to like what you're going to do next i couldn't even say that with my actual way of speaking it was just impossible you're gonna toss the head at the feet of the baron gotcha make a statement okay it's this little bro and this guy let's make a statement a present for you baron holy crap it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up what what now i have to go turn it in on this island what no booty bay hates me that i did not expect <clears throat> 15 minutes later okay guys i'm on this island now jagero isle and here you go there's a little pirate camp and a pirate ship and they all have quests for me too okay bell Grush dagger fist another day of labor loot 10 general good crates from the south sea sandbar okay one gold for that whoa you get a lot of gold from this stuff man we must have rum 59 silver bring 15 bananas to ale saint greta okay what else do we got we have dirty jacob right here bets are more than just games they're a way of life and this man took the ring when he lost and vanished never to be seen again 
go find this punk and get that green stone. It's rightfully mine. So I got to get a stone from, uh, okay, Rightful Jade for Dirty Jacob. These names, dude. Okay. Sark Blacktooth got an orc pirate. Look at his face, dude. All right, Sark's Grudge. Bring Iron Patch's head. Oh, so another quest to kill Iron Patch. So that's actually really cool that they planned around this. Look, I have the original one and the new one they give you for switching rep. That's really cool. Theoretically, you can do both. Interesting. First Mate McCoy. Travel to the Blood Cell Compound and meet up with Wincing Willy. Okay. Oh my god, you can go in and like you never get to go in these ships and see them manned properly. Properly, so do keep that in mind. This is already a bit of a treat. This one has a little shop guy, a little troll elf in the jungle, his quest says. Find the night elf close to blood sale compound. Okay. There's a cat in here. Okay, and all the way in the very back where you would normally find somebody to kill. Ooh, there's a treasure room too with some statues, man, of night elves. But there's a little boy in his Garfield. Oh, man. Making a statement. One gold. Holy crap, dude. That is not a joke. Okay, uh, naming the vessel. Decide the name of the ship. Oh, this uh, seems like the pirate life suits you, you scoundrel. That's true. If I get to name the ship, yeah. Oh, I have to automatically name it the Crying Dandelion. I wish I could name it anything and just type it in. Okay, fine. I'll call it the Crying Dandelion. And then he screams it out to the world. And boom, I get 60 silver. Taking over Faldir's Cove. Invade Faldir's Cove. Kill everything in your way. This is really sick, guys. So all of these are custom quests. I do want to reiterate that. Custom Blood Sail Pirate quests. Something we didn't get, obviously, in actual Vanilla WoW. And something I get to attempt to do today. All right, we actually have more of this boat. This is a big boat. There's an innkeeper? Well, that's pretty cool. Smuggling ale quest. Gather a barrel of steam weedle wine, 10 flasks of port, a cast of Merlot, and a jug of Orgrimmar Brown for Fazzle the Slick. Okay, I might have to go all over the world for that, but we'll make it happen. And another one, Jesse Sugar Tongue, the ship bard. Bring a highborn necklace to Jesse Silver Tongue. Okay, is this all in this zone? It might. Oh, it's throughout the zone as well. There's some stuff up here. Wow. Wait a second. Gold Tooth Gary, and he's a gambler? Maybe you want to gamble? Tell me how much and I'll throw the dice. If the roll is above 50, it's like legal freaking game. I will double the bet. Uh, okay. Let me bet one gold. I get a 90! No way. One gold. Oh, bullshit. Okay, one more time. I won again. Let's go again. Come on. What the hell? Let's go again. I won again. One more time. Okay. Something's a little off, right? Oh, no! I lost again! Okay, I got- I'm literally breaking even right now. What do I do? Seriously. Wait, I might actually be up one. Oh! <gasps> I won again. Bro, I won again. They gave me a streak. Do I keep going? Yo, I lost. That's not good. Oh, I lost by one. I lost again. I lost my streak. Okay, now I'm down. I, I just need to win one more and be okay. Okay, I think I stay here. I think I stay. I Look, this is not for me, dude. I got to get away. I think I'm fine. I should have been fine when I was up, but no, I kept going. That is such a weird thing to have in the game, dude, but actually really iconic and cool. Some people are going to lose all their money, though. I know they've hard-coded that to where nobody can actually come out on top. I know it. There's no way they didn't. Oh, here it is, guys. Arcanist notes. Okay, let's get that. Okay, cool. We found it this time, and then we return to Vildu. I think that's the troll upstairs. I am correct. Okay, let's turn this in, give you the notes. I don't like that they can let you kill the cat. I feel like the cat should be like the child. It should be invulnerable. Okay, find the golden elf. Okay, now we've got a bunch of quests, guys, and they all require me to get off the boat. The first one I can see on this island is getting bananas and collecting, well, just bananas, yeah. But I have to kill level 50s, man. This is a really high level quest. It's probably doable for me still. Ah, it turns out the gorillas don't drop the bananas. The bananas are found throughout the jungle that the gorillas inhabit. How many do I get? Tell me I get like four or five. One! Okay, this is gonna take a second, guys. Let me start completing completing some of these quests that just require me to pick up bananas and stuff. I'll see you guys in a bit. So guys, I've made one of the worst decisions of my entire life. Today, in that uh, little pirate quest you just saw me do, where I then became hated with Booty Bay, I have possibly ruined my character. <laughs> Because apparently, see, I was under the impression that this was temporary. I don't know why. I feel like somebody made me think this was temporary. And then at the end of the pirate quests, I'd be able to basically go back and be okay. Because, like, obviously, it would be weird to you to think that one decision while leveling your character invalidates the next four cities that you can ever go to. Ratchet, Gadget, and Everlook, and Booty Bay. That doesn't sound right. I don't think I can go back. Could be wrong. But I've been dying so much trying to do these quests because apparently... There was, I don't know, how, how does this make sense? Apparently there is a way to do the Blood Cell Buccaneer quests 
without being hated with Booty Bay. I think what we're gonna have to do is just complete what we can. I'm gonna go back to Booty Bay right now, waiting for the boat to ratchet. Gonna die probably again in the process. But every single quest I could do is currently complete. And so I'll turn those all in, see if we get anything else. Maybe, maybe not. And uh, I guess we move on to Hinterlands and something that just doesn't have goblins in it. But at least I could say this is something that I could have never done on vanilla. It's custom. And now none of you guys have to make the same mistake that I did. Okay, so we're basically in a very tumultuous position. And uh, I basically just put my character on hard mode for this level bracket. Number one, I cannot quest in Tenaris, And this actually takes away all of the ZF quests. Because I do get destroyed by guards everywhere I go. It's actually a super big F. I wish I had properly read the quest text. So, I think we have to quest in Feralos. I have one quest here though. That, you know, is part of the blood sale stuff. That led me to Tenaris. I have to kill a bunch of scorpions. I will kill them now. I will take their venom, and I will turn it in in the Steam Weedle port, but every other quest you see on this map is not doable right now, even the ones that I could potentially turn in. So, I literally just have to get rid of them. There is no option for me to do these right now, so I might as well take them out of my quest book. So, I'm going to kill Scorpions and also summon a Voidwalker ASAP. Feralos, like I said, might be a decent option. Uh, that's like your high 40s, actually your mid 40s based on some of these quests, so that's not too bad. There's so many places to quest, actually, in your 40s. And I've also still got the Hinterlands. I got all the quests already, but I'm kind of saving it for getting a couple more levels first, because the first quest I found, I had to kill turtles that were level 50. I literally am missing everything. I need to be at least 47, I feel like. So it's probably this quest, see where it leads me, and then Feralos. Now, in terms of my spec, I actually regret going Searing Pain spec because uh, in any case, first of all, I haven't gotten to any PvP yet. In fact, I made more friends than I made enemies. It's a really weird dynamic when both factions have the option to be civil and talk to each other and even group. I think a lot of you guys might be very surprised to know that if that's the case, a lot of people actually will group with you and not kill you. I mean, people People aren't killing me at all and you could say maybe it's streamer privilege and maybe so I don't want to be ignorant on it people do know my name now but I actually kind of felt like it would have been the opposite if I'm real with you guys I thought more people would have wanted to kill me because of this not group with me but maybe that's some kind of naivete I don't know I think what I would have done different is foregone all of the fire stuff and actually gone shadow bolt because honestly I'd rather spam shadow bolt and not take aggro off the searing pain than use the searing pain which is hitting less even if it crits anyway it's so weird it's a weird spell man it's clearly made for pvp like I I said I'm making more of a world PvP spec. Once again, as I just said, I assumed everybody would be out to kill me. Turns out damn near nobody is, except for large groups, and that happened days ago at this point. But I mean, look at this. If I Shadow Bolt somebody right now, let's see what I hit on the Scorpion with the Shadow Bolt. A 258, and then a Searing Pain. 147. Even if it crits, it's like the same as a no crit Shadow Bolt. It's faster, sure, but uh, when it comes to PvE fights, it's irrelevant. Once again, I think the Searing Pain is 100% for some form of PvP. But then I thought about it. You know, a lot of people actually will go for the Seduction, apparently, and then Soul Fire. And then I thought, couldn't I just do the same concept? But with Shadow Bolt? Wouldn't that theoretically be potentially stronger if my Shadow Bolt crits? Obviously, things will change at max, but for low-level PvP, that might have been the way. But as you can see, the Shadow Bolt just feels better to me. I just go for two, go for the Drain Soul, get my shards call it a day. And then guys, the goal became just getting to level 50. So I went through the motions. I went and quested in Feralos. We met up with a guy and did as many quests as we could. Luckily, we were able to continue questing with him all the way up to the northern area of Feralos, destroying the harpies, getting the dark heart, turning it all in in the camp. And then the next destination had to be Hinterlands. Why? Because we finally reached level 46. That's why. Level 46 is when you can start picking up all of the different chain quests or just quests in general for Jinta Alor. And Jinta Alor is a troll temple that's chock full of some of the most amazing quests for you to do because it's all located in one spot. The problem is that you have to find a full group typically of people because they're all elites. They're all very, very difficult to kill. And so we couldn't do it together. Lucky for us, while we were questing and doing other things in Hinterlands, we found three perfect players to group up with, which was absolutely pivotal for us to turn in basically 30 or 40,000 XP worth of quests at the end of it all. With that, my friends, I was actually able to acquire the following stuff. This Deep Woodlands Cloak for 12 magical damage. This Rune of the Guard Captain for 1% spell hit. And also this Nature's Breath 
finally replacing my Black Flame wand. You might be wondering, McDoubles, this is actually faster than your new wand by 0.10 speed. Sure, it's slightly weaker, but do you really not want six more fire damage? And no, I don't. I'm pretty much good at this point going for these stats because six intellect and three stamina is not a joke. It's also stronger and barely slower, so I actually think this is finally worth replacing this with. I will say though, Black Flame wand is OP. As soon as I could put this on, I didn't take it off for 14 levels, guys. 14 levels. I mean, that's an amazing weapon right there. Very high value. The goal now is to turn in a few other quests here and there, Undercity, and then going all the way over here to Strangle Thorn Veil, turning in the Vildu One Tusk quest that I got earlier, which was a pretty interesting chain quest I could show you guys right now. Had to go to Feralos, had to find a golden night elf statue, kill a goblin in order to uh, complete that first quest, find a couple other ones around the uh, temple, and ultimately it led me to needing to go all the way back to this guy to give him all his little golden statues, I believe, and you can see them right here in my inventory as well, highborn golden statue. Now here's the thing, this is actually a quest that gives you a 20 gold reward, and this is like a big perk for being a pirate. So one of the main premises of this video that I did not mean for it to happen, but it happened, was that I became an outlaw, I became a pirate, and I am banned from a lot of cities. This playthrough has become exponentially harder because no ZF, no gadget Zan, but I was able to do a bunch of really good stuff that you guys already know about in the hinterlands, as I said, in Feralos as well. And I really want to go over here as well to the esteemed Gila Jim's Isle, because I think we're actually approaching the levels for that. And of course, hate Forge Quarry, my friends. I'm excited for that as well. I have been playing for an incredibly long amount of time, by the way. Um, it's probably somewhat around eight hours straight right now, but the grind must continue because I want this video to go out on Sunday and I need to be level 50 for that. Okay, guys, Vildo One Tusk. Let's do it, man. Taking the booty home and I've got everything you need, buddy. Give me my 20 gold, 51 silver. Yes. Here be some coin for the troubles. I be taking them statues and that ray now. I don't even remember what the ray is, but okay. 1,000 more rep. Only 2k XP for that? I can't be too upset because I got a ridiculous amount of gold. I have 80g naturally, basically, at level 48. That's pretty impressive, I'd say. You know, despite the fact that I'm hated by so much in this world right now, I feel pretty loved. So I do just want to say there's just a casual 3,086 people on right now, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm also pretty confident it's been higher than that. I'm also going to go to the Warlock Trainer. I think we can get Soulfire now, which if I'm right, is pretty freaking hype just to try it. I think because I'm limited due to no Tenaris, I'm going to go back to Feralos, do some more quests there, and then finish up in Hinterlands. All right, what do we got? Oh my god, look at those destruction spells. Wow, okay. Rank 3 Reign of Fire. I'm going to go for Rank 2 Conflag. So good. Shadow Burn as well. And uh, that's a big, big... Oh my god, it's such a big freaking difference. And then Soul Fire. Let's see this. Wow, up to 862 damage, but what's that cast time? Four seconds! So I've got to CC somebody and have a soul shard. It's also on a one minute cooldown. I've literally never seen soul fire on a one minute cooldown. I've never played vanilla warlock. Yeah, I'm just, I'm actually leaving all these. I just don't need them right now. Maybe if I go affliction or something like that, change it up, maybe demonology. I want to try demonic sacrifice because I don't remember this even being in vanilla. Once again, 30 minutes of no demon and you get a big buff. Now, when I look at this, only two of them seemingly are good. Imp and succubus, 15% more shadow damage or 15% more fire damage. Now, here's the thing that you always have to keep in mind. If you go 21 points into one tree, like let's say to get demonic sacrifice, you can never go 31 points into another. So I can't go for fire damage plus con flag. So personally, where I think fire could still be good, I really think Succubus could be pretty interesting as well. But that's more about PvE, right? Because for PvP, I feel like you always want the demon. But okay, let's go quest. So guys, I think the goal of the next video is going to be getting into Hate Forge Quarry for sure. I really thought it was going to be this video, but it's level 52 minimum. Here's the thing though, Gila Jim's Isle. <laughs> we are here in Molog Refuge, an island off the coast of SCV. Level 49 right now. I'd like to finish off at level 50. And we got a bunch of new quests to try. So I have no idea what the uh, lore behind this is, but it's looking like goblins, it's looking like ogres, and uh, I like that combo. So I'm gonna start picking stuff up, searching for ember guts at the mall log post, okay? Tangle Moss, let's see. Uh, bring the heart of Tangle Moss to Blatark. Nice name, bro. The Gob Crank Fizz Wanker. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? The Gob Crank Flaz Wanger. Okay, find and bring the Gob Crank Flaz Wanger. Okay, more goblin lingo. And I gotta bring stuff back. The Lost Crew. Search for signs of what happened to Blasno Blast Pipe in Gila Jim's Island. Okay. So what I like most about this is that I think it's custom. Like, obviously it's custom, but I think they've quite literally 
paid for somebody to draw this, right? And try to make it close to what WoW has, or maybe they made it somehow. I don't know, but it's really cool. I've also got pirate quests that send me here that we will do eventually, but I only recognized it because I was like, where's the South Sea sandbar? Oh, I just found it. Look, it's right here in Gilajim's Isle. Oh, we've got Lord Crookzog, and he's a badass. Holy crap, dude. Okay, what do you got for me? The Molog War. Slay 10 lurking jungle creepers and 10 jungle paw panthers. We are pushed back to this refuge because we're not very strong anymore. We once controlled most of the island, so it was an ogre island, and the Rizari defeated them, whatever that is, maybe trolls? And the wildlife now pose a big threat. Okay, let's help the ogres, man. They deserve it. May oh my god, what if this is their way of putting the ogres in the horde? I mean, we've already got Rexar's ogres, but we could have Molog one-headed ogres too. Because here's the thing, everybody wants to say like the ogres are going to be two-headed. No, they're not. The playable ogres are almost certainly not going to be two-headed. If anything, it's going to be the one-headed ogre variants, and they're going to have to somehow figure out how to make the armor sets and stuff work. Some of it, obviously, as you can see by their models, already works, but I don't think they have many chest options. It would be just interesting to see what they do to be honest with you Okay, now the worst part about this island I've just realized is because it's a custom map It doesn't look like my add-ons are working properly with it I've got the right pf quest and everything but there's nothing that shows me where to go So maybe I need a different version of pf quest I just forgot about somehow, but I do have the turtle version We're just gonna have to go out here and see if we can find stuff ourselves So I just found this quest under the city in a cave and this gives us more of an idea of the lore of the island This guy right here has gorg the great seer he said hello and welcome to molog refuge where a battered people stuck in a constant fight for dominance this guy in particular says i fear the constant state of warfare will engulf his people basically and bring their end and i need to convince the uh, guy Cruxog, we spoke to the chieftain guy to uh, quit the aggression so what i find interesting about that is that it does give you this little bit of ogre lore as well where the majority of them are complete idiots and just like that really stereotypical idea of like the big strong guy that's also dumb but there's also a a small portion of them that are somehow still intelligent enough to do magic and magic and wow lore like that's no small feat so there's always that little tug of war but you never get to see any ogre lore so for once we actually get to see that that's pretty awesome i also have deep tide sanctum as a quest right here gathering 10 deep tide bracelets okay so that gives me some idea of what's going on because i do see a deep tide sanctum over here so we'll be able to get there eventually i do need to find the cruxog guy he's in here no he's back here lord cruxog i come on behalf of Hasgork. He's asking you to end your aggression. Oh, he laughs in my face, bro. Oh my god, I think that's custom voice lines. He said, I am leader here. Oh, look at this. My map is working for, like, the traditional stuff. I see. So the Lord will bring us to ruin. I must come up with a new way to make him be convinced. Oh my god, ominous music. The Molog Crisis 2. Now I have to get Basilisk guys, Crawler Pincers, and Deep Snap Tails. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to start just seeing what I can do to find these quests. So what do I think of Gilligem's Isle so far? Well, I've only been questing here for a moment. As you can see, I've only got one quest done. Now we're going to work on another one. I do have two points I want to bring up. Number one, you can definitely tell that this is uh, fan created in many ways. There were places over here in the Zulrasar ruins and stuff where I got stuck and there was no way out. So that's a big F, right? Also, with that the PF quest extension, for Gilligem's Isle, if there even is one right now. I think it might be in the process of being worked on. Uh, this is really hard, but that's to be expected. Level-wise, it's about level 48 to 54 if I had to throw a guess out there. And if I was you, I would be level 50 when I came here to avoid missing and stuff like that on the level 52 mobs. So for example, I'm not going to be questing up here at the very beginning because most of these mobs are in the 50s. And also, one other point to be made, mob density in some of these places is absurd i'm talking impossible to pull more than three mobs at one time specifically once again in this area one thing i will show you guys before the end of the video though is calcor point uh which is very very reminiscent of the kolkar tribe and as you would assume based on that alone it is in fact a centaur tribe a centaur point of interest interesting right centaurs on an island in stv where if you know the lore centaurs are actually native to Kalimdor. So how they got across the ocean over here, I, I don't know. But maybe the quest actually tells you. So one of the things I definitely need to do is I have to get a bunch of uh, goodies all around the map as well, right? I have to get, for example, jungle paw fangs and creeper roots, jungle venom glands. And I have another quest like that somewhere as well. Ah, uh, that's it. Basilisk eyes. So you can see maybe these guys will give me their eyes at some point. Crawler pincers and salt snap tails. It's definitely a say all be all type of thing though in regards to you're doing the whole island, man. Like you can't really get away 
with just doing a portion of the island. It seems. It seems like the whole island, basically questing-wise, plays into itself. And so you're going to find yourself doing all sorts of quests and not really getting, you know, like three or four done, turn them in, get three or four more. It's more like, hey, here's ten quests, good luck. And uh, if you get some quests that come after that, good luck once again. Because you're going all over the island, boy. And that's how I feel right now. So I do need to be in Deep Net Cove. Although, if I'm honest with you, I can't for the life of me remember why. Although, I do remember the name of it. So we're going to chill here for a moment and see if we can do some questing. The entire time I've been on this island, I've seen zero players. Now, you might be thinking, maybe the server has uh, not that many people on right now. Well, of course, I've already proven that to be untrue. But look at Ongoro. This has a whole host of people right now that, b besides that random level 4, 42, no clue what he's doing there. Uh, but these like seven or eight guys, these guys could be in Gila Gyms. They're choosing on Goro instead. Maybe they don't even know about Gila Gyms. Maybe I'm going to actually unleash that to uh, the general turtle player base. And of course, not that many people in this new wave are even in your late 40s or early 50s, to be fair. But I do think it's something to be said that I'm the only one here. I'd like to see this zone uh, polished a little bit. It's my first real bit of critique on all of Turtle Wow for the subzones. In fact, I don't even think I had any for the previous ones. That's how, in my opinion, good they were were. This is the first one where, once again, I'm getting stuck on certain bits of paving because they didn't plan around you falling in a ditch somewhere, for example, by the ruins, or uh, you know, there's way too much mob density, for example. But other than that, I will say, thematically, I'm seeing ogres, I'm seeing centaurs, I'm seeing really interesting extensions of the STV questline feeling, right? That idea of, like, I'm back in the jungle, boys, and we're here. I mean, where else is there a jungle at any point, really? Uh, there really isn't. You really can't say on Goro, it's a different kind of jungle. This is more of the coastal jungle archetype and i really like it so we're still going to finish questing here to any degree we can and get to level 50. okay i made it to the end of this cave i did actually get all of the basilisk guys i needed which is really nice the drop rates have been good so far and now i have glass eye and i need his glass eyes so i guess this is who i need to kill he's level 53 though this is what i mean like some of the mobs are pretty high and that's very very scary See, he's resisting my immolate right off the bat. Well, I go for another immolate. He resisted again. Another one. Okay, I got it. And we'll go for a corruption. I rarely do the two-second corruption. He resisted it. But uh, I need to get any residual damage I can because I feel like I'm going to be missing and resisting a lot, unfortunately. Let's see. Is Thandog going to die? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like Let's con flag right here before it goes away. Nice, we got it, but he's on me. Let's go for the death coil. Nice, we got it once again. Okay, I'm just gonna go for the shadow bolt into the shadow burn. Oh, okay. Uh, I, he resisted one of them. Okay, let's just drain some souls. Oh no, resist it again. Oh no, resist it again. Oh no, resist it again. Okay, we got him. There's the glass side. GG. Oh my god, I'm out of this cave, bro. So you definitely, if you're a lower level, want to stay to the right-hand side of the island. That's where things are the lowest level. And by the way, if you don't know where this cave is when you get here, it's right here on the map. It's this cave. So they don't even tell you when you hover over it. It's not like that for every place, obviously. Some places have names. Some places you have to search for. You know, for roleplay and immersion purposes, that's actually really nice. Now, as for my talent spec right now, I literally just went 39 points in destruction and took everything I could ever want. Maxed out Ember Storm for 10% more fire damage maxed out destructive reach 20 percent more range putting me at a 36 yard range not a 30 yard range for my destruction spells and i feel pretty happy about that i've also started going into demonology but this is not my end game build and by the way crawler pincer okay so it does obviously come off the strand crawler gotcha there's also a couple elite quests and because nobody's doing these i don't think i can even attempt them right now but one of them gives you the reaver which i don't know is 40 ap on a 2h like that good again please guys take all of this as a prejudgment because that's quite literally what it is direct experience could be different it could also change based on your class it could be that also based on your personal experience some of those items end up being good not everybody has the same leveling experience always important to keep in mind obviously a caster is going to look at melee and male loot and think yeah that sucks uh and they're going to judge it more harsh than maybe a shaman a palio or a warrior or even a hunter would right okay am i going to die to a crab i don't think so Okay, nice. Gotcha. Now, as for my skills, I will say we're at 223 alchemy, 228 herbalism. This is actually really nice. Super happy with our progress here so far. And uh, also, I have not continued to level first aid, but I have been saving, as you can see, and it's also in my bank as well, guys, all of my cloth. So this is going to be a really easy thing to level up as well. We'll probably end up doing that in the next video. It's just, it feels like this zone is definitely a zone where more people need to be here and you need to group with them. Because I think if I had people to group with, even the mob density wouldn't have been as bad. But I'm just going for honesty in many ways as well. I'm having fun. Like, especially, like I said, on this uh, right-hand part of the beach. This is really nice and well-designed. Very beautiful. I love the aesthetic. I love the way they've built the island. When I say that, I feel like this is made by a fan. I'm talking about the areas where they clearly didn't, you know, expect you to fall in a hole. 
hole and then not be able to get out even when you're on your mount or you're jumping you know it's stuff like that not that the actual aesthetic is bad the aesthetic of the island is literally stv 2.0 it's quite gorgeous in fact so yeah i'm gonna keep questing and doing as much of this stuff as i can we're gonna finish up the crawler pincer and salt snap tails quest on this coast and then i want to check out some other parts of uh, the island that i can show you guys and we'll see if maybe we can get some more quests done yo i was killing my strand crawlers on the beach trying to finish this quest these freaking last two items keep eluding me and i got a skull land shield drop that's really cool okay i'm gonna get rid of these crochet gloves wow dude i got a blue drop it's the little things man that make the journey so so much better gg okay so i did find ember guts he's over here in this cave so once again i'm helping you guys out if you do come here this is a big plus right now you won't have to look for it yourself so ember guts okay let's turn in finding ember guts and he has the mall orb quest reclaim the mall orb from gordosh heights on lapidus isle i have two quests to go to a lapidus isle now i don't know where it is but okay and by the way guys the uh gob crank flaswanger is in the exact same area right outside the cave it's kind of hard to see but you get it right by these murloc huts and then you just click on ascend this guy over to not get interrupted right there there you go nice we're actually finding things on our own which is pretty fun but hey i'll definitely take it that's uh even more quests done and let's go explore the island some more so i think i do want to explore this a bit solely for the fact that it actually does explain why there are centaurs here in calcor just as i suspected in the quest text it's this quest right here lacorgos that requires me to kill lacorgos the reaver they say it's been a long time since our people left the sands of kalimdor we left our tribe for the promise of riches and now the man who led us here betrayed us for his own prosper those riches that we fought and worked so hard to gain were taken and so we're left to rot so i have to go to a pirate camp somewhere and look for this guy the reaver and kill him so that this little uh, tribe can get revenge for basically getting scammed and having no way to get back home okay so like i said i don't know about finding and killing lakurgos because he's an elite but he might be in here at the very bare minimum this might be the location of another quest you just saw me get the jade mine yeah they specifically said the jade mine would be in the northwest of the mall log refuge in a cave and this is the only one so there is a sign outside. I saw this on my way uh, just exploring the island earlier when I got stuck. And I was like, oh my god, what is that? Now we're finally coming. Warning! Do not enter. Okay, I won't be taking that advice. Also, I've already shown you guys a soul fire, I think, in a quick clip when I was explaining it. But here is one. Oh, 812, but it does cost that soul shard. And not only does it cost a soul shard, it doesn't refund it either. Okay, we've got some Defias human miners in here. I know it's not really Defias, but that's the model that it reminds me of from Dead Mines. Okay, luckily the miners are lower level than the pirates who are guarding it outside, which actually is thematic and makes sense, which is nice. Ooh, 853 con flag crit. That's my best yet, I think. Yep, that mob density is coming back. It's starting to haunt me, where you can't literally pull just one mob. Okay, let's just go for Shadow Bolt and try to finish these off faster. Shadow Bolt con flag. Oh my god interrupt really really that's how you're gonna do me you give them an interrupt i'm not gonna die but this is look at this pushback i have the talent that gets me out of that and it's just not proccing 70 percent chance i think that's why they ended up making it 100 percent chance in later expansions because it was like why would you do 70 percent 70 percent implies that you want it to almost be all the time but for some reason you want to give a small chance of just letting the guy get screwed it doesn't even make sense dude oh what did i just get freebooters pirate hat oh that is extremely aggressively statted that is actually the best item i've seen from this island yet oh and it's a pirate hat bro that might sell okay that's actually a really good sign we've got the shield that we can sell and now uh we've also got this freebooters pirate hat all right let's just death coil him i hate when they won't get off me i guess i'm starting to get to a point where thandok is not better than me in terms of uh maintaining threat so i'm gonna have to upgrade him again hey okay, that was a shadow burn shadow bolt combo also immolate into the convlag is burst okay star emerald by the way there we go all right i'm gonna just get my mana back up and we're gonna piece out of this mine Okay, so I did finally encounter another person who knows what's going down. He's done quest here. I think he's Alliance. I asked him where Lapidus Isle was, and he told me it's north of the South Sea sandbar, which is not even on the map. I mean, theoretically, it is actually on the map, but you can't click on it. So I guess I swim past there, and maybe I encounter something else. But he says it's the Alliance hub, implying that the Alliance obviously don't come to Molog. But they do have quests, apparently, that make them come to me, just as I have quests to make me come to them. Their hub is called Kalen's Rest. If you go north of South Sea Sandbar, you will be safe. Okay, Lord Kruxog, the Jade mind there you go and 15 strength necklace wow that's just a weird one maybe that's actually good it would depend on your luck during your warrior playthrough or something right those stupid pirates thought they were so smart taking over the mine but now they're dead yep okay oh <laughs> there we go guys level 50 okay 
that's supposed to be the end of the video, but I'm going to go check out and find Lapidus Isle first. I think we're going to continue Gila Jim's Isle at the beginning of the next video, and of course, try to get into Hate Forge Quarry and any other custom content we can find along the way. But first, let's go find Lapidus Isle. Guys, it actually does have a map. It just wasn't clickable on the main map. You have to find it. Oh my god, this is one of the biggest subzones custom made I have ever seen. So I don't want to spoil all of the quests just yet in this video, but I will show you these aerial shots that I got. Lapidus Isle is so huge, and I thought it was just going to be Gilligim's Isle. It's not. There's a whole other intensely big island that you can't explore, that apparently the Alliance will pseudo start in, I think, and uh, the Horde will get to go here as well. This is insanely massive, and I actually can't get over it. It's actually intensely impressive. I really just can't get over how huge it is. It is. There's even this entire ogre compound, man. Oh my god. Now, I do just want to point out, if you look again at these aerial shots, there is a lot of intense mob density here too, and I feel like you can imagine traversing this on foot is going to be hell on earth, and this is a place that I have to go to find something that they don't tell me where it is, so this is going to be a lot of random killing and stuff like that, but it's still beautiful and really well done. So before we end this, I want to show you guys these aerial shots of what is called the Tower of Lapidus. Uh, which has a bunch of elementals I can see, and then it leads off into the beach. There's even more random islands. Like, look at that. What's that over there? I want to know what that is over there. Uh, but we have a boat and a little village with green roofs on it. Dude, there's a little pirate village. Oh, that's sick. Who are these people? Um, what is this? There's humans. Marines. Oh, my God. There's like humans everywhere here. This is like the Kul Tiras. Oh, my God. And guys... We're gonna have to leave it right there. That's insane. But okay, guys, if you enjoyed episode five all the way to 50 and all the custom content and you wanna see an episode six, make sure to like the video to show me that you want to see it because once again this series is based on you guys wanting to see it and then if you want to then i'll make the next episode but anyway guys i hope you guys enjoyed like i said i'll see you in the next one big doubles out